Hi, you're listening to After the Review with Peter and Terrell. What it do, baby? You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Podbean, and coming soon to Apple Podcast. If you like, you could comment, share, and subscribe the episode. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Hi, everybody. You're listening to After the Review with Peter and Terrell. Just some housekeeping notes for this week. We've listened to the feedback. We love it. We appreciate the comments. And we're changing our name from the Couch Coaches podcast to After the Review with Peter and Terrell. We think that suits us a little bit better. It also will help you guys find us on all our available platforms. So let's get yeah. things started this week, Terrell. Uh, is it crisis time in Cleveland? The Browns dropped another big game against the Rams. Uh, I know the Rams are the defending NFC champs, but uh, Baker Mayfield did not look good at all for the third straight week, and Freddie Kitchens seemed really over his head. Yeah, Freddie, Freddie did look like he was a little lost. Baker looked good. I mean, as if you watched the Sunday night game, they did the whole breakdown. If he if he got the ball, his hands really quick. He looked great. As long as he held it, it was it was bad. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if it's. I mean, Baker doesn't look great, but I don't also. I think it's kind of like Freddie Kitchens. Like the offense just looks lost. Like you got to tell me that you got OBJ, Jarvis Landry, Nick Chubb, and you know some other people. You know Ratley from A and M. He's actually playing pretty good. <laughs> Ninjoku. Good tight end. The Joku too, and the good Joku tight end. He didn't play on yeah, uh, I know. Sunday night. But yeah, but yeah, still. They, he's got a lot of weapons, and I feel like, you know, maybe if you just made things really simple and, like, you know, things would be easier or stuff like that. I, I don't know. It just seems like the offense is lost. I don't know if necessarily it's from Baker. Offensive line is very bad, though. So it's really hard to be good when you have a bad offensive line. I mean, like, it's, it's so true. It's like, you know, you there... can tell when you watch it. They're a bad pass blocking offensive line, but they they're not that bad of a run blocking offensive line. Like it feels like they get a good push, especially you know Chubb gets his Chubb gets his. They can control the line of scrimmage. Um, I agree. They they don't pass block well, but Baker. They I was watching this little breakdown today. Baker always seems to go to his right, and defenses are just keying off on that, and they're taking away the left side of the field, and they're daring him to throw right into the teeth of their defense on the right side when he rolls out. I mean, totally. So it's just be interesting to see how this, you know, this season evolves the Browns. I think, you know, Freddie Kitchens. I, you know, I don't know how much his background is in in, in calling plays and you know, being none. okay. I know he's, he's been yeah, none. He's been until last none. year. Okay, so great. They did a great job hiring the right head coach. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, they just I don't know. He needs to go get like an OC, someone to really command that offense. I think and let him just coach or whatever. So I agree. Uh, the defense. Played valiantly for Cleveland with the entire secondary banged up and missing the game. Uh, they played valiantly. But the Rams, are they a defensive team now? It seems like since the Super Bowl, they're not giving up anything to anybody. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, uh, they look pretty good on defense. Uh, you know, the Browns really, I don't know if they're like, we talked about it. They don't know if yeah. their offense or the, the Rams defense, but no, they really do look good on defense. Uh, they kind of like you know neutralize you know OBJ and Jarvis Landry for the most part. Those corners are really good. We know about that, and you know the safeties look really good too. I mean, they just look good as a whole. So maybe they might be a defensive team this year because it seems like the offense is a little sluggish. But towards the end of that game, they they got off to what we saw all last year. So uh, it'll be exciting to watch, especially if they can put both together. Like they'll be back at Super Bowl again. Uh, it definitely doesn't hurt having Aaron Donald at defensive tackle. He's probably the best defensive player in the league. But uh, your boys, KC and Baltimore, that game lived up to the hype, I thought. Uh, Pat Mahomes came out on top. He had a big game. Lamar Jackson, little flat throw in the football, but uh, they ran well, and uh, I, I really want a rematch. I feel like there's going to be a rematch in January. No, totally. It was a great game. Uh, for me, personally, like, you know, Chiefs, Chiefs team, uh, I report in NFL, but they showed me a lot in the first half of their defense. Like, they looked really good. They you know, gave up six points early, and after that, they didn't give up anything. It was halftime. It was 23-6. So I was, like, really impressed with them. I was like, okay, this is, like, this is what we paid, you know, paid Matthew for, Frank Clark, you know, got a new DC and all that stuff. Like, this is what we paid them for. They're showing up in big games. In the second half, they kind of got sliced up, uh, sliced up the running game or whatever. But, like, no, they did their part. They held on, you know, and we won the the Chiefs won the game, so it was great. You know, you already talked to Mahomes how, how well he played. So, 
Uh, there's no need for me to double down on that. Uh, so <laughs> keep bragging. Yeah, about he, he's a baller. Yeah, for sure. I think Baltimore's a little bit of a mismatch for Kansas City, just from a physicality standpoint. Uh, KC doesn't feel like a super physical team, and Baltimore is as physical as they get up front on offense and defense. So that can wear on a team, especially later in the game, and that's what we saw in the third quarter. To be fair, Lamar Jackson completed two ridiculous passes that should have been intercepted that were just kind of heaves to keep them around in that game. So the score was a little bit closer than maybe the actual play, but uh, I can't wait to get a nice snowy day in Kansas City in January, and oh boy, that'll be something fun to watch. Uh, yeah, for sure. And then the uh, legend himself, Danny Dimes, cemented himself for the New York Giants. What a comeback. I can't believe he came all the way back down. What were they down? 18 in the fourth quarter or 18 in the third? And he came back yeah. four, t- four touchdowns, two rushing, two throwing. Uh, I know Tampa Bay missed a field goal at the end of the game. Uh, big surprise, Tampa Bay kicker woes. But uh, he has – Danny Dimes got something. He's got a life back in the New York Giants. 100 percent i'm pretty sure they think they have their savior savior now unfortunately barkley went out uh it's gonna be some time but no danny dimes uh looked really good um he was running the ball he just gave him like some some like life it seemed like you know i think all the life's been sucked out of them with eli the last couple of years so i think it, it just looked like they, they had some life there so it was great to see uh i just want to see if we, he's gonna be consistent you know we've seen these rookie quarterbacks start off week one and be so great and uh, do things like that so I would love to see them uh, see him continue to do it week in and week out now. Well, they got the Redskins at home next weekend, so that should be a nice, you know, another tune-up for him. But then he's got to play uh, my Vikings defense and then the Patriots defense the next two. So those are pretty tough defenses. We'll see what he's really made of. But uh, I heard a great story. They said in the game, he uh, looked, got in the huddle, he looked his teammates in the eyes, and he said, let's F and score. And they said the guys were like, whoa, because apparently he doesn't swear. He's a really, like, nice, normal kind of guy. And that got the sideline buzzing because uh, two plays later he ran that read option for a touchdown. And that's another element that he adds that Eli Manning couldn't. Eli Manning can't run the ball to save his life, you know. Not at all. Yeah, he's like an old man with the – he needs the walker with the tennis balls. But uh, Danny e. Dimes can move a little bit, a little bit more than I thought. Uh, so I was surprised about that, but – Big win for the Giants. They got a lot of life back in them. Uh, let's see if it can continue. You, like you said, Saquon going out for four to eight weeks is not great. But, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. Another interesting game, Indy-Atlanta. Indy takes care of the Falcons pretty comfortably, it felt like. Atlanta made a little push at the end there. But Matt Ryan seems like he's over the hill and done. What do you think? I mean, I don't know, honestly. Like, if you go back and look at his numbers – he had 340 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. Like, I'm sure if you go down and break down a game, you know, you know, play by play, he probably didn't look great. But I still think he's got it. Like, I think it's just his Falcons team is so up and down. We don't really know what to expect. Uh, but, you know, he's definitely, you know, tilting towards the way I've been a little older. But I still think he can get it done. I mean, he's thrown for 300 yards each game this year, even the one that Vikings game when they got blown out, essentially. So I I don't know what to expect from Matt, some Matty Ice. I mean, I'd love to take, you know, maybe in week eight, can we come back and evaluate this and see if he's out of it? I don't know if Julio Jones is bailing him out or what. So um, it's just hard to tell with this, uh, this Falcons team. So uh, I don't know. I, I saw this stat. I think it was they've been outscored in the first half 48 to six through three games. Uh, that's not good at all. And so they're playing behind the gun as it is. Uh, the defense has got another injury. Keanu Neal lost for the season again. I feel really bad for him after tearing his ACL last year, tore his Achilles this week, and got flagged for taking off his helmet because he was in pure distress that his Achilles was no longer attached to his leg. But uh, I guess that's the NFL these days. we got to be by the book. That kid some yeah. bad luck. Yeah, the Derrick Rose, almost like the Derrick Rose of uh, the foot NFL with uh, yeah, those injuries. Sure. But uh, next match, Kyler and Cliff down in the desert facing off against Kyle Allen filling in for Cam Newton. Kyler and Cliff look a little overmatched in the NFL. Uh, That Panthers defense really stuck it to him in the second half of that game. Real quick, you think you think Kyle Allen talked shit to Kyler Murray? Okay, (laughs) it's your number one overall. I just threw threw four touchdowns. Take that. 
Uh, do you think he said anything like that? I mean, he might have. I don't know. I, I don't think they had a great relationship when they were both at A&M. No, so... no, not at all. They both they both left A&M because of each other, which is it's a whole different story it, for a different yeah, day. Yeah, we don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now. <laughs> but, I mean, but like, I, would, I would talk shit if I was him. Like, you think, like, dapped it up after the game? Like, <sighs> I didn't see like, him. Maybe. I don't know. Dang it. I, I know. I was looking like when I figured out they were playing, I was like, ah, I want to see if they dap it up, you know, pre or post game or whatever. But they're just like, ah, I don't need to talk to that guy. No, I know. I'm sure. I mean, Kyle Allen and Christian Kirk did because they're best friends. So I'm sure yeah. there's uh, no love lost uh, between Kyler and Kyle Allen, though. But yeah, they looked overmatched. Uh, hopefully, they can maybe get a win under their belt. Uh, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray definitely looks five nine out there. He seems to have trouble seeing over his line, and he he threw interceptions on consecutive passes in the fourth quarter because he just didn't see the defender, it seemed like, because he had guys in his face. Mm. Mm, that's tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah, you could say Cliff and then Kyler are, you know, trying to work things out. But I think they're trying to learn together. So it's really – it's like, you know, it's a combination of you've got, you know, a first-year head coach. No, no rookie quarterback, and they're both trying to figure it out together. So, either in four years, Cliff would be gone, and Kyler would be playing baseball, or they'll <laughs> figure it out. So, um, it'll be interesting to see. So, but I, 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 it's too early for me to be like to write them all off. And be like, this isn't gonna work. It's three weeks in. They're both trying it out together. Uh, I think they'll get better. Well, speaking of too early, is it too early to say uh, Cam Newton is no longer gonna be the starting quarterback? For the Carolina Panthers, uh, P, why are you always trying to you're trying to put me in the bad spot with, with Cam week in and week out? You're always trying to touch, you know, touch the nerve. Cam's uh, already ruled out against the Texans this week, so Kyle I Allen's saw, I saw that. again. I saw that. I mean, it might make sense. He might be really, you know, banged up. Maybe he was like, you know, from that game against the the Buccaneers. I mean, like. I don't know if he's banged up before that or during that, but maybe that's not the reason why they didn't give him the ball down the goal line. I don't know. But there's obviously something wrong with him. And then what they saw from Kyle and was like, you know what, maybe we could buy Cam another week. Like, he did excellent. Maybe it was like Kyle and just threw, like, four interceptions and couldn't move the ball. Maybe they're like, oh, Cam, you got to, you know, you got to tough it out and come back this week. So maybe that was what the call was. And I think eventually he'll get his job back. But I don't know how much longer he will be in Carolina or playing football at all. So this would be interesting to see. Uh, I wish the best for Cam. It's not looking great for him. I'm going to give you a stat, and it's really going to hurt you. In their last 10 games, the Carolina Panthers are 2-8. and eight. Kyle Allen, 2-0. and oh. Cam Newton, 0-8. Oh so just a small, little, small, little tidbit for you right there. Small sample size for Kyle Allen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Very small. But 0-8 oh for Cam, not a good sample. Large enough and not a good sample size at all. Uh, Fair enough. But uh, speaking of quarterbacks, not quite done yet. My boy Kirk Cousins bounced back this week again. I know it was the Raiders. I know it was at home. But he looked good. He didn't look afraid like he looked in Lambeau. Big game next week against the Bears in Chicago. We'll see if he's back. But currently he's out of my doghouse because they look strong this week. Yeah, let's have this uh, Kirk Cousins conversation next week when I really play the Bears. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it there. Let's I know, leave it there. I know, it. it's key. Uh, how about Dalvin Cook though? He seems to be back to his pre ACL form, what we thought he was coming out of college. Three straight hundred yard rushing games to start the season. Only the fifth running back in NFL history to do that. Woo, boy, he can run the football. I'm um, sorry, did this turn into a Vikings podcast? Oh, <laughs> hey man! No, I'm just, I'm just skull, kidding. It's baby, fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, they they played good this week versus the versus the Raiders, so it was good. I mean, that's what, good. You, you got it. You can only win the games that are on your schedule, man. You got to look good. You're right. You got to look good doing it. Uh, You're 100 percent right there. How about undefeated teams now? How about the Buffalo Bills, three and O, baby? And they got the Pats that are three and zero, who dismantled the Jets like we knew they would coming to town. I'm excited for this game. I don't know about you. No, I'm excited for this game too. I don't think it'll be much of a game, <laughs> but I'm excited for it. I'm sure Josh Allen would like. Maybe he'll make it crazy and competitive at the end or something like that. I don't know. I feel like they they always have a way of doing that, especially the Bills. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll keep my eye on it for a little bit there. Maybe monitor the score if it gets interesting. Might turn it on. 
<laughs> but I'm not going to count this as much of being any game. I think the Bills will finally get, you know, what they're ex- expecting to get all year, and that's probably blown out. Uh, I think the, you know, they got lucky with the Giants, the Jets, and the, the Bengals the first couple games. It's been, you know, I shouldn't say lucky. They won those games. They won them. But yep. they were playing some pretty bad teams. So and the games were close. The, the games were close. <laughs> yeah, the games were close and everything. So. It'll be interesting to see them when they play the Patriots. I know, so... Uh, Honestly, the yeah, best part about this game is I can't wait to see what the Bills Mafia does for the tailgate prior to the game. It's going to be insane. I'm expecting double-decker table fires that get jumped through. I mean, I, I, I can't wait to see it. It's going to be amazing. Those fans are out of their mind, and they're the best part about Buffalo. So I'm just really yeah. looking forward to that. <laughs> Um, how about- I see something crazy every week. It's yeah, ridiculous. It, it's great. I mean, they do know how to handle having the Buffalo Bills as their football team. Uh, no knock on them. Uh, big surprise this week, though. How about Teddy Bridgewater and the Saints? Kept on marching up in Seattle and got a big win at the Hawks. Yeah, I was at this game and uh, it's kind of like, you no, know, started off with Pop and I was like, no, and it was crazy because I heard a lot of yelling. It's also another crazy thing. Game. I'm at the game, but I next never really watched the game from the actual stadium. I watched from TV still. You know, it's just, yeah. it's really weird, yeah. but that's something I do. Uh, but you know, you hear a lot of yelling from the crowd, and you're like, and then like, you know, obviously the TV's delayed, and you're like, well, what happened? And then you see the punt return, and you're like, oh, you know, I would not expect now. I expect something to happen for Seahawks. So uh, it started off that way, and then next thing you know, they had a fumble recovery uh, for a touchdown. And you're like, man, this is going to be tough for the Seahawks. I thought it would be a little tough for the Saints. Honestly, it's, it's, it's raining. You know, their style of play is a little finesse and everything. No, but they had no problem. Took care of business. Uh, Teddy Ridgewater looked great. You know, Alvin Kamara helped him out. Michael Thomas helped him out. And uh, I don't know what, what what to take from the Seahawks, though. Like, Chris Carson did not look great at all. No, not Russell, good. Russell, like Russell. Um, the defense, again, like. It's not, you know, outside of, you know, got Bobby Wagner and KJ, you know, KJ Wright, you know, got the D-line, but back in, it's not very good. I mean, to uh, add so. insult to injury, I mean, Pete Carroll got, had to get stitches in his nose because he got hit with a football pregame. Yeah, so it just, I know. It L- looked like he got in a fight. Like, Jesus. I mean, I could see Pete getting in a fight. He's a crazy guy for oldest coach in the NFL, and he certainly doesn't act like it. No, he's super cool. Everyone loves him. It's here. Uh, so I don't know. It, it's interesting that happened. I was, if you asked me like a thousand times before that, who's going to win that game, I'm probably saying the Seahawks just because they're at home, you know, they're in their climate, you know, rainy, gray skies, super Seattle, uh, you know, they're rolling, you know, the Saints don't have breeze and everything. And they just came out flat. I know there's like a narrative going around, like maybe they came out, you know, thinking no breeze, this will be easy. I don't think football players think that way. So. Uh, really shocked, but no hats off to the Saints. Yep, uh, big game in the Superdome next week against the undefeated Cowboys on Sunday Night Football. That should be the real test. We'll see what both teams are made of. Uh, let's move to college football. That Notre Dame-Georgia game, uh, Notre Dame came to play. It was a really great football game. That's what I love about college football. The environment was crazy down there at, uh, between the hedges. And Notre Dame, in a tough environment, took Georgia to the edge. But uh, the dogs came out on top. Yeah, they did. Uh, they kind of made me eat my words a little bit last week when I said, you know, this <laughs> yeah, would be never be, be never be in doubt, <laughs> never be in doubt. But um, you know, they came to play. Brian Kelly's team, you know, finally showed up. Towards the end, I started seeing the Brian Kelly team. I always saw, uh, you know, you know, just kind of falling apart in the second half. I think, you know, you know, the, the, the physical play got to him a little bit. But you know, it's just he's got his team. You know, back in the right spot. I don't think, you know, there'll be a title, you know, bound team, but it's really early in the football season again to really say that for sure. But um, I was happy with what I saw from Georgia. Obviously at home, it's a little easier to come back and stuff like that. But, you know, they took care of business and what they're supposed to do. You know, if you want to win a national championship, you got to win games like that. And they did. Yeah, Jake Fromm, absolute stud. Very much the underrated quarterback coming out this year in the draft. I think he's going to maybe be the best of the big three coming out this year. But Ian Book looked good. at point. There were large segments of the game. I thought Notre Dame was the faster and more physical team out there on the field. But, you know, it happens. You, you don't like to say there's moral victories, but a little 
little bit of a moral victory for the Irish, and I could see them running the table the rest of the way. And who knows, they may find themselves in the fourth spot back in the playoff. All right, now let's turn to our boys, the Aggies and Auburn. I'm going to let you take this one away. Uh, Yeah, the <laughs> the Aggies, once again, didn't show up in a big-time game. Oh, I'm sure we all thought, you know, hey, this is the year they get over the hump or they start doing something good. We got Jimbo here. Uh, he's going to change things around because, you know, last year with Kevin, I mean, the last couple of years with Kevin Sumlin in these games, they never really showed up. You know, they got beat. And what do you know? They do the same thing. <laughs> uh, you know, the people are getting, you know, Peter, we were texting about this. You know, you were talk, telling yeah. me, oh, these are someone's players. This is this is like this is the reason why like we'll get his players out of here and then we'll be able to start winning games like this. Like, you know, they're not disciplined and all this other stuff. And you said people on Twitter are saying this. They were. I don't have a Twitter, so I can't I, I, la- can't, I can't verify. I laughed can't verify so this. hard when I saw someone was trending and I clicked on it and that people were saying that uh it was okay. they were just really undisciplined to start the game. They got a lot better towards the end on defense. But Yeah, but like yeah, people say that, but like Jimbo's been there for two years. Like, even if no, they're undisciplined. Like, it falls on Jimbo's shoulders now because he's got to teach these guys to be disciplined. Like, that's what they brought him in for. That's what a And paying all this money for, and like that's what they're doing all this for. Is like Jimbo is at least to make him disciplined and change the culture and do all these things. So we can't keep saying these are Sunland's players. Or I mean, I mean, yes, these are players he recruited, but we can't be like, oh, these are Sunland players. That's why they suck. But if we want to say that, let's go look at Florida State. Like. There are a dumpster fire right now. Like, Jimbo didn't leave that program in great shape either. So, like, maybe that's the future to look forward to. Like, I think as A&M fans, we need to get off this high high horse wagon or whatever we think A&M is as a football program because they're not. They're not elite. They're a very middle-of-the-pack middle, middle of the pack program. Like, that's it. Like, really, in my opinion, A&M, A&M is a glorified Iowa. There's Iowa with a bunch of money. Like, if we're being honest, and you're going to tell me, yes, we play an SEC. It's, yeah. it's hard. It's tough. An but eight, whatever. An eight whatever, five like, SEC team is basically a two loss Big Twelve or Big Ten team. Let's be honest. No, like, like, like if Iowa was in the SEC and got SEC players, they'd be doing the same thing as A and M. Like it's completely the same. Like yeah. I just think A and M is there. Like they have not had back to back ten win seasons in like twenty years. So you like, can't say they, that SEC players ain't going to Iowa where it's two degrees come October. But, they're not but, going like, to that cold weather. They're not. I, I understand what you're saying, but, like, that's that's really what A&M program is. Like, we're just, like, hyping it up because we have a lot of money. We have a big stadium. We have fans in your heart. We have this great tradition, tradition. And, like, occasionally we might beat a Bama or an Auburn. But, like, we don't do it in a year-in and year-out basis. We haven't done it with Sherman. We didn't – someone didn't do it. Uh, Jimbo, so, like, so far hasn't done it. But, like – you no, know, it's early for him still. But like, just we're not an elite program, and like, when you become an elite program, maybe we can have those aspirations and thoughts and things like that. But we're not. So people need to like, for one, bag off the other people's backs. Maybe bag off someone's back. Yeah, he wasn't great, but you know, he started this see, off like see see he see started his this whole thought. He, in Arizona he right started now. okay. Yeah, he has his walk up, but he started this whole thought off. That maybe A and M could be good. I'm sorry, they did. They had a back to back ten win seasons in uh, 2012, 2013. His first two years, but that, that we're not in league. Pro, we're not in league program. Like I'm sorry, but we're not, and that's just where it's at. And we need to get off this high horse where we think this is a elite program and really good at football, but we're just honestly middle of the pack, and that's it. I wouldn't put us as an elite but, program. Obviously, we're not a blue blood elite program but there's only like five of those in the country i would say so i'm not gonna push okay you. well if, if we go elite and then we go great programs we're still not there we're still not even a great program line like great programs don't lose win those games at home and if they do lose they lose like you know by two or three points they win those games at home i mean tell me we got the greatest one of the greatest home field advantages. We got to be able to and show up. We seem and to do play that. so much better on the road than we do at home too, which is really funny. Uh, for so how good like that home to, field is personally to me, like we need to like you know, there's a bunch of diehard a- Aggies fans, and they're just like oblivious to what reality really is. Like they expect these things. I totally that's not agree. the case. I totally agree. That's not agree. the case. That's the problem here. That's the problem here. They want to run everyone out of sh- out of town when things don't go great or whatever, or blame it on someone else. 
when really it's just like look in the mirror. It's you. You have unrealistic expectations for A and M. Like that's my soap opera for it. It's just that like we need to get off the high horse and really just reel it in and see what it is for it or what A and M is truly, and it's not you know elite program. Well, guess what? We got three more chances to show that we can do it. We got Bama, we got LSU, we got Georgia still on the schedule. We win two of those three games, even win one of those three games. Yeah. And, you know, you're still trending in the right direction. It's not like the schedule isn't impossible. I wish I wish we had Mr. X better to fill, pull up the odds of a going 0-3 because I'm putting $100 on that <laughs> if he, he can find me an odds of them going 0-3. And, and I love A&M and I love the players there, but they just aren't ready yet All right. to take that leap. All right. Speaking of elite programs that aren't elite, Michigan got absolutely shellacked in Wisconsin yeah. this weekend. That was ugly. Yeah, we talked about this earlier earlier. Maybe the first two first pod or the second pod, one of them. Uh that Jim is maybe maybe he's just not ideal for Michigan. He is yeah. real. Maybe he needs to just take step a couple down. years and go cook. Step down, go coach with his brother, you know, have his whole brother thing going on in Baltimore. But yeah, he he's he doesn't have it in I don't know what the deal is. He can't complain on recruiting or anything like that. Like, I agree. I don't know if he's coaching. Like, it's just it's bad. So, and they get preseason ranked so highly every year off what? Like, they don't really do anything. Like last year, they did have a good year. They were like undefeated for most of the year, and then Ohio State put it to them. But I mean, still, like you can't you can't be doing things like. I mean, I mean, he could do things like this, whatever, <laughs> but. Losing, losing, losing the West Wisconsin really shows me what they are, and then they're not, they're not that. No, maybe they're, they're not elite program either. Yeah. So I think you know lately they've been on the same page as a And M. Honestly, <laughs> I so. think an NFL trip back for uh, Harbaugh would be good for him because he seems to be. I think Michigan's a little bit of a mismatch, and it, that it really is unfortunate when your alma mater isn't the perfect fit for you as a coach because that's everybody's, you know, that's everybody's goal as a coach. You want to coach your alma mater. Yeah. When you go when you go to something as prestigious as Michigan, you know, let's be real. That's a real that's a real prestigious job and it's unfortunate, but I think he should step down. I don't see them they got Notre Dame on the schedule. I don't see them beat Notre Dame. I shoot, they might lose to Iowa next weekend, but I don't know. How about uh did you catch that uh UCLA Washington State game, Pac-12 after I dark, did. and that was no because <laughs> I was on I was on the East Coast, so I did not catch that game because uh, that is very late on East Coast time. That's like way after one, dark. Yeah, that's, that's a way, that's that's almost sunrise. <laughs> oh. um, man, no, I didn't catch it. I caught some highlights. So that now that's crazy. That's what you know. That's what you the Pac-12 after dark meant for though. Crazy stuff like that. You know, shootouts late at night. You know, just, you know, if you're out in the bar and, you you know, you bury your hands. <laughs> drink and having you know, a good time. Drink and having a good time. You know, maybe a game like that, it might catch your eye and you get really excited. So that's exactly what it's for. I'm glad that happened. And yeah. props to Chip Kelly for getting a win uh, out in Pullman. Uh, UCLA, what were they down? They were down 30-plus points in the third quarter with about five minutes left, I think. It was like 49 to 13. And – they came roaring all the way back. How do you feel being Washington State's quarterback? The man threw nine touchdowns and lost a game in regulation. That's that's got to be the weirdest feeling in the world. <laughs> I know. Like, he's, yeah, he's still gonna he's gonna like you know <laughs> celebrate still somehow. Yeah, I don't right. know. He, he, it wasn't his fault for sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, a little bit of Mike Leach's over aggressive play. You know, sometimes it wins you games, sometimes it loses you games. Passing the ball instead of running it. Yeah, but for sure. Looking ahead to next week, uh, not too much on the college slate. Got Notre Dame and Virginia. That's a nice ranked matchup. And USC and UW, those are the two interesting college games. NFL, we've got a couple few good games. You know, we got the Eagles desperately trying to get a win. They're really falling apart after a home loss to the Lions. They're at the Packers they're on not, Thursday night. That's going to be a tough they're game. They're not healthy. Yeah, they're not. They're not healthy. They're in trouble. They're definitely not healthy. Uh, the, like we said, the Patriots and the Bills. I'm a little. I'm interested in it. It's interesting. They're both three and zero. Someone's gonna be four and zero. It's gotta happen. Uh, the Vikings at the Bears. You know, the Vikings really look like. Are they ready to take the step and be the division champs? The Bears haven't looked great this year. Trubisky's been pretty shaky. 
but the defense has been as good as always. Uh, the Bears are finally back home since that home opener Thursday night against the Pack. So it's been almost a month, it feels like. So it'll be interesting to watch. And then, of course, the 3-0 and Cowboys against 2-1 and Saints on Sunday Night Football in the Voodoo Dome, the Superdome. Who knows what kind of magic will happen. I'm sure they got, like, a Dak Prescott doll somewhere, and they're, like, stabbing him in the legs. <laughs> he's going to pull up as he's running. He's got a wide-open touchdown, and he'll overthrow it because, you know, somebody stabs the needle in his neck, and his arm just gives oh, out man. on him. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, let's let's pick them. I'm gonna pick them real quick. All uh, right, what's the first one on the docket? All right, let's go picks again. Let's uh, recap last week. We went, you went four and one. I went three and two. Nice. It's uh, you got the edge on me. Uh, first game on the docket for us. Eagles at the Packs. Where are you going? Oh man, I, you know I love Carson Wentz. I'm going with the Eagles. Oh, he's... I think my thought was if Alshon Jeffrey is like, hey, if you can't play on Sunday, but you're close. Let's hold up, hold you off, and let's get you to go Thursday to the quick turnaround. And like some of those other receivers, I think that was the case, and some that some other people. But so I think they'll be a little bit more healthy on Thursday, and they'll be ready to roll. I I hate to say it, I'm going with the pack. It, that hurt my soul. I just think Philly's way too banged up. I would love it if the Eagles beat the pack in Lambeau on a short week. It would make my heart glow with content, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, how about the one college game this week? Let's quick go. note, quick oh, note, quick, quick note. note. Uh, let's get Nelson Aguilar. Let's send him some stick'em. Uh, we'll <laughs> order it and we send it to him. We just gotta find an address, or maybe we'll just send it to Lambo because he needs some for sure. So, uh, <laughs> that's getting to the little ahead of ourselves here. We're gonna when we get to Pete's doghouse, might be a little <laughs> nod nod coming up to that. But uh, next game, college game on the docket. We got ranked USC Trojans at the ranked Washington Huskies. A little Pac-12 action again. Uh, I know where you're going with this one. Let me hear it already. Yeah, yeah, we're going with, the, going with the Huskies. I'm sorry. I'm upset I'm not in town for this game, but I'm going with the Huskies for sure. They're gonna, I think they're going to pull it out. Uh, you know, Washington, Washington Husky Stadium on Saturdays. You know, games like that, it gets pretty rowdy. Great stadium football, so to say. They say I don't agree with them, but that's what they say. I agree. I'm going with the Huskies, but I think it's going to be close. USC has been up and down and up and down, so I don't know what I'm going to get out of USC. I think Washington's a little bit safer of a pick. Uh, next uh, one. Chris, oh, go ahead. Chris Peterson at home is uh, is really good. It's, I know he lost to Hawaii. Crazy freak thing. <laughs> had a lightning storm, two-hour delay. Crazy, a bunch of crazy stuff happened, but at home he is like almost you know unstoppable. So. That's another thing to add there. But we both got Huskies, so we're good. Okay, next game. We got the Battle of the Undefeateds, King of the a AFC East, Pats at the Bills. Let me guess. You're taking Tom Terrific and the beautiful New England Patriots. Yes, I am taking Tom Terrific and the beautiful New England Patriots. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do it. I think I'm going out on a limb here. I'm taking the Patriots. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're going 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 way out. On the <laughs> no, I mean, we'll see. Maybe Buffalo will surprise us, but it's Buffalo, so you can never. I'll Patriots if I get this until game further wrong, notice. I'll be totally okay with it. Patriots till further notice in the AFC East, and maybe for yeah. everything. All right, Vikings at the Bears. I'm going with the Vikings. I got to take my boys. Cousins, I think, shows up. He mans up, drops the cojones. Uh, we power run game. We're able to move the ball against this Bears defense. And the defense just shuts out Mitchell Trubisky. And we win like a 13-3, 13-6 game. Man, uh, this is tough for me. I don't trust Mitchell Trubisky. And I don't trust Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Uh, I don't trust Nagy. And I don't know what Zimmer might do. So, man. Uh... <laughs> I guess, I, you know what, the Bears are at home. I'm going to take the Bears. I'm sure Trubisky's going to let me down. I'm sorry, Pete. All right, I'm uh, okay with it. I'm sure I'll take the Bears. Uh, side yeah. note, I'm sure the sprinkler system will be set off all day, the three days before, all night, and the field will be a total mess because it always is when we play at Soldier Field because the Bears are a bunch of cheaters, but I'm not biased uh, or anything. Well, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, you're not biased. All right, last, last, last game for us to pick. Them Cowboys heading to the Voodoo Dome against the New Orleans Saints. Do the boys stay undefeated, or do the Saints keep on marching? Uh, as much as it hurts me to say this, I think the boys stay defeated. 
Uh, I think, I think, you know, what I saw though, the Saints, you know, their defense looked really good against the run. But I think, you know, the boys give them that little bit of that Zeke, the Zeke potion. And uh, Dak does what he needs to do. This is so you know what we've been talking about Dak getting paid and all this because looking great. But these are the games where you know where Jerry's like shoot, you know forty million is I'm gonna have to pay him forty million now if he's going down there in New Orleans and beating the Saints. You know I'm not gonna be able to take them to go. He's not gonna be giving a hometown discount. You know I'm gonna have to pay him forty million. So uh, yeah, I think I think they show up and they take care of business. Uh, are we for sure? Are we backing up the Brinks, Brinks truck for Dak? Um, I think. I'm going to have to say, how about them Cowboys? I think they dominate this game. I think the Saints are going to be coming off that big win in Seattle, and Dallas punches them in the mouth. I'm thinking a blowout, total blowout. I'm calling it now. Really, out. total I blowout. hate to say it, I think the Cowboys win by two two scores at least. I think they dominate this game. Oh, man. I know. You should put some money on You should put some money on that. A <laughs> uh, little out there. Speaking of money... Our mystery better X is back and better than ever. He went 1-0 with his lock last week. The Cowboys covered that massive 21-point spread. Barely, yeah. but they covered it. Yeah. He's back with his— What did he go? 2-1? Uh, 2-1 week, week one. Week. So he's 3-1 on the season. So if you guys were— No, back, he, he, I thought he gave us all three picks last week. No, nah, he did not. He only got us the Cowboy pick in time. He gave us the pick oh. after that. Whatever. The guy's late, man. He was late, but I'm this sure, week... I'm sure he's not late putting his picks in for himself. No, I'm sure he just don't want us to be <laughs> making all the money for us. Yeah, he's uh, holding the money to himself. So this week for his upset, he likes the Jags over the Broncos. They're getting three points. I, I like that too. Uh, Gardner Minshew, I... good man. Yeah, hey, I like that too. You want? How, how about we should do? Let's let's do this for Mystery X better. We'll take his bets and we'll use fake money <laughs> and we'll we'll put we'll put it on there. So. How much do you want to put on this game? Uh, Jags plus three. You know, I could throw a nice twenty. I could throw a nice uh, ten grand on that. Ten grand of fake ten, money. <laughs> we got Pete. We got fake money. Let's up the odds a little bit. Here. Oh, wait. let's talk about like like a hundred hundred thousand. Oh, uh, we going, on this game. All right, let's throw we'll throw hundred k on the Jags plus three. Okay, you like hundred thousand on the Jags plus three. Okay, what's the next game? Oh, he likes the Chiefs minus six and a half against the undefeated Lions. They haven't lost yet. After that terrible minus collapse, six. week one minus six and a half at minus, the Lions. Uh, I'm putting five hundred thousand on this one. Five whole. Oh, he's that's a homer pick. I like it. Oh man, Rell's got five hundred k on his. So we, we we got six hundred thousand. Those six hundred thousand on the line right now. Yeah. Okay. So it's the next one. Let's roll. So I think we could throw our last four hundred k on this one. His lock of the week. Uh, Easy bet. He's got the Pats minus seven over those Buffalo Bills. Let's just throw okay. the rest of that money on that. Are you good with that? That's, I'm good with I'm that. I'm good with that. So we got a million dollars out there to be one. I mean, they're on there on the line. On the line. On the okay. line. So, I mean, if you got anybody out there got a million dollars to bet. Yeah. You uh, know, we, got, we got for you some money for you to spend if you got money to get a bet. <laughs> we could know a good place to put it. Yeah. So, lock of the week. Pats minus seven over the Bills. He's a big fan of the Chiefs minus six and a half against the Lions, and he likes an upset from the Jags plus three against the Denver Broncos. He like he likes Minshew in the jock stretching before the game. That's <laughs> what he told me. So. <laughs> I don't doubt it. All right, so Terrell, who balled out for you this week? Uh, who balled out for me? Jonathan Taylor, uh, running back, Wisconsin. He gave Michigan everything they can handle and more. He had two hundred three yards rushing. Uh, two touchdowns, eight yard, eight point eight yards are carry. That's crazy. That's almost like a first down a carry. Damn. The man just, was just walking across, all over Michigan's defense. <sighs> wrecking, so, wrecking eight. ball out there. Wisconsin and their running backs. Who would have guessed? All right, time for my dog. Who's in my doghouse? I'm gonna say everybody who catches passes for the Philadelphia Eagles. They had seven <laughs> drop passes this weekend in an NFL game at home. With a good quarterback, Carson Wentz throwing to them. I don't know if you saw this. There was a viral video going around. Man saved these children getting thrown out of a burning building. And he took a little dig at Nelson Aguilar, saying he had better hands and could catch unlike Nelson Aguilar. But to Aguilar's credit, he responded on Twitter saying he wanted to invite that fan to the game for being a hero. So classy move by Aguilar. So I'm going to say everybody who catches passes for the Eagles except Nelson Aguilar is in my doghouse. You're in the NFL. Catch the football. It's not that difficult. Come on. We'll let, we'll let, we'll let Nelson uh, out the doghouse because he's giving away his free tickets he, he already gets. 
Yeah, I mean, that's why we let him out of the doghouse. But it's a class. It was a class move because the guy took a shot at him on a viral video, and you know he could have okay. been salty about it. But he was a big man and invited him to the game because of the, you know, great thing that he did for his community and saving those people from the burning building. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. That's a good point. Maybe we're just putting Nelson Aguilar in timeout. Yeah, he, maybe he's... not completely in the doghouse. But we'll just put him in timeout. Him and Kirk Cousins that. in time. Him and Kirk Cousins in timeout. <laughs> All right, that works. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. This week, we'll see you again next week. And if you like us, remember to like, subscribe, and share. 